and welcome back to Plymouth Pavilions for another live in conversation with here at the Devon Business Show 2023. It really, I mean, it's buzzing down there. It's buzzing more than a than a than a bumblebee going mad like a buzzy thing i really don't know where i was going with that but never mind and we've got some more guests with us here in our podcast studio my name is paul philpott i'm one of the vice chairs at the devon and plymouth chamber of commerce and your podcast host from fresh air studios but before we go any further let's just say hello to a few of our exhibitors we'd like to say hello to big wave marketing to devon coffee company do very good coffee i've had that coffee very nice coffee they'll be keeping us going and to devon women in business and also to our very good friends at pb media who have been doing lots of social media activity for the chamber they really, really go above and beyond. And um, you should see the weight of the equipment that they carry, all those cameras. Yeah, they're doing beefy, beefy guys. Right, so with me now around the table, we welcome back Steve Warren Brown, but in his capacity as Societry, which we'll talk about in a few moments. Hot off the press is Societry. And also we have Global Warrior, Jim and Sam. So we've got Jim to my immediate and, and Sam in the middle between us. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah, you're going to regret sitting in between us, I tell you now. I tell you now. <laughs> Let's start with uh, Mr. Steve Warren Brown and with regards to society. Um, as an organisation, as a charity, you really are quite hot off the press. I mean, when did you launch? Uh, four days ago. Four days ago. <laughs> there you go. So the idea, we, we, we uh, registered as a, as a CIC in January. Uh, so technically we've been around for nine months, but literally the launch was four days ago. Four days. Come a bit closer to your mic or bring your microphone a bit closer okay. to you because you've got better? lovely dulcet tones. Fantastic. And how has it gone since the, since the official some, launch? Some, some phenomenal uh, support, wonderful messages from people. They really seem to be in tune with what we're trying to do. It's fabulous. Uh, we just need to now start thinking about it as a business and yeah. getting the money in and getting the sponsors in and um, starting to capture some imagination and get, and get people supporting it. Fantastic. And from Global Warrior, we've got Jim and Sam. Global Warrior, tell us about that. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's an, an initiative to get a much better, more immediate pulse on the planet. So mm -hmm. uh, we use ordinary people from every walk of life, every echelon of society, and we train them to be polar explorers and ocean explorers. And then we go out and do purposeful, worthwhile data gathering uh, explorations for our scientific partners, who are some of the best in the world. That sounds completely awesome. I, I, or mad. Or, 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 or crazy. Sam, I mean, it's... That, yes. You, you, are you an explorer? Um, I wouldn't call myself an explorer yet. Yeah. I've done my own expeditions before meeting Jim, um, but for friends. But having just done our last 20-day tall ship expedition in the high Arctic, I feel I'm a little bit closer to being an explorer. Definitely the explorer's assistant. Wow, this is this is we, we've been yeah, we're going to come back to this because this this concept of gathering data and knowledge and know-how in order to better our future sounds extremely innovative and very very important. And um, but let's just go back to society. And um, as you mentioned earlier, you you launched a few days ago. Just see, I can see something rather random coming up the <laughs> stairs. Um, Steve, you you may introduce um, your uh, colleague, shall we say, friend, Good friend, friend. friend. For those, um, for those of you who are listening to the audio-only version of this podcast, I'm going to leave it up to Steve to describe what's going on. <laughs> uh, well, I'm hoping yes. that my good friend um, uh, Mushu yes. is on the stage. Yes. He's very shy, but he's yes. agreed to come out today to support our cause. He's, um, he is um, stage right, I think they say, um, looking very, very nervous. Um, and let me just describe that Mushu is a... He's just knocked off the set over. That's okay. fine. Who he is? Well, she is a giant mushroom. Uh, there are other words usually that come to mind to describe a, a, a giant mushroom. Um, brown, brown, brown in nature, but very colourful in character. Um, Mushy, have a seat. Have a seat. Next. Did you, do either of you or any of you remember Noel's house party? Yes. 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 It's, it's one cool. of those moments. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. I can understand that. Sit down, Mushy. Right. Now, Where everything goes wrong. As well. um, no, I, I, I get you, Mike. Do we need to get some level from Mushy? Um, no, he's shaking his head. He's not very cooperative, is he? This mushroom. Mm, he, well, he's talking to me at the moment. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so Mushy, what's the um? Why? 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 <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 the, 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 the I, I've written a series of children's books. Yes. Uh, My Wacky Forest, based on the workings of the Kira Miyawaki, and the main character is Mushy, who's a fun guy. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, so Mushy is very kindly um, supporting us on our quest, which is to plant 96 microforests in 96 schools. Mm -hmm. This is all about um, elevating a tree planting project to something that's a bit fun, a bit educational, hence uh, engaging Mushy and, uh, and his antics. I have told him to be behaved today. There's a lot of expensive equipment around. but there, um, Yes, there is. Yeah, yes. So... Uh, I think he's going to be behaved. I'm sorry, he's, um, he's very good at stroking the back of people's heads. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I think is that the magic in the mushroom coming out in you? Is it really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 And um, and so, why did you feel it's so important to have a mascot of this style? Talking out from an object objective point. So I recognised if I was in front of a bunch of thirty children in a school yes. in a classroom, I, I, I perceived there'd be fifteen that would be really interested in the environment and nature. There'd be another fifteen that would need we'd need to communicate with a different level. So be it the colourful books, be it the, the reading and writing in the books, the interaction in the books, be it having a cuddle from a giant six foot mushroom. Giant six foot mushroom, yeah. He's also going to be prepared, you know, it, it, it's, the, it's the wackiness of him as a character, which kind of sums up me as a person. I think fun is incredibly important yes. in life. So if I, I wanted to introduce a fun element to our idea to elevate the, the project from being not that there's anything wrong with a tree planting project, but this is a tree planting project with a difference. We're, we're appealing to corporates who could hopefully get some, some extra value out of the, the benefits he will bring, having photos with the kids, inspiring kids. And if this inspires kids to engage with nature more through the stupidity and fun of it, sorry, Mushy, then, then great. And that's a really good um, thing that you've just said, engaging with nature, engaging with the world around us, which going back to the introduction that you both gave for Global Warrior, and um, that's what, what you do, isn't it? Yes, it's all about um, vital data gathering for our scientific partners. And, but it's also about engaging your next door neighbour, really. I come from a very humble background. I've uh, managed to be an explorer for 38 years and I've still got all my fingers and toes. <laughs> uh, but, um, but I was uh, raised on a council house, so if I can do this sort of thing, anyone can do it. And, um, you know, joining Global Warrior is a really good way of doing that. It shouldn't cost you a bean because we teach you how to go out there and, and raise the sponsorship. But your contribution towards um, gathering vital scientific data is, is vital. These discussions all have to come from ideas. It's ideas that engage people. Sam, how did, it, how did this as a concept come about? Well, Jim's been running ice warrior for 22 years and it was always the idea that that would move into the other extreme environments the premise being that extreme environments are where we see first what is happening with climate change it, it's the first barometer that something's going Can wrong you give an example oh. well glacial retreats mm. which is devastating at the moment in alpine regions up in the arctic um desertification deserts are expanding that kind of thing and our environments will cover those aspects and so the idea started with Ice Warrior which as I said 22 years and we always wanted that to then move into the other extreme environments and Jim launched Ocean Warrior in January this year and we've got this 10 year regular expedition on the same journey that's going to happen with our tall ship which will benchmark the oceans the same section of ocean and water for 10 years. Wow. Yeah, so 10,000 nautical miles each year for 10 years. So we should be able to point the finger and say, this is going wrong or this is going well. If we don't look at these areas, which for 70 years now we've, uh, we've understood to, to be the barometers of change, then how do we know, is the rationale, uh, that anything we do to mitigate climate change is actually working? And, you know, you might say the scientists are doing this. Yes, they've got all autonomous satellites measuring things, but they need calibration and validation. And that's the ground truthing data that we provide, as well as empirical data, data that you cannot um, dispute because it's there. If, I, if we look at a cube of seawater, we can tell you what's in it, pollutants are in it, uh, you know, how much carbon it's absorbing because the, the ocean absorbs 50% of the carbon that we emit. And, you know, what the consequences of that are in terms of food chain and right the way down to fishing and foodstuffs and, and, and everything else in between. But it's all about getting that data, interpreting it in a, an absorbable way that everyone can understand. 
absorbing carbon and um, that's a subject that i know is very close to to steve's heart and um, in terms of i guess the, the phrase carbon capture comes to mind i don't know if it's the right one to use but you were recently at indeed at your launch event talking about the fact that microforests are really really quite um ingenious when it comes to this <coughs> actually it's simpler than that this is this is a natural solution so microforests are mimicking more of what would occur naturally so the planting style of the microforest is random this is why the model fits beautifully with children because you haven't got to tell them to plant them in a straight row you haven't got to tell them to put them in groups of seven just go out and plant it where you want within the confines of the space identified to plant it and you know the work these guys are doing is is phenomenal but can sometimes be distressing you can come sometimes think oh and my my aspiration born through something one of my children said to me, which is after watching a David Attenborough program and saying, I'm just fed up with all the bad news, you know, what can we do? And I'm, this is what I'm passionate about is using Nushi, the books, and, and getting into the front of the children and giving them some education, but probably most importantly, giving them some hope, you know, inspiring them to believe they can have an impact on their future, rather than the perhaps more common sort of diatribe we fed, which is, you know, We've done the damage and it's mm. too late, we're over tipping point. All of which may well be true, but we need these kids to come up with a belief they can do something. And I'm hoping, with the help of my esteemed friend here and using the data, I'm hoping we can, in a tiny way, impact on that and have some, some impact and moving forward. Jim and Sam, I mean, hope is a really, <laughs> it's a good word. Um, is the, when you, when you, I guess the hope for you is you're eventually going to find data that proves there's a slight reversal in what's happening to our planet. Absolutely. We should be able to identify that in a much more immediate way. The problem with scientists is they do their research and 18 months later, if you're lucky, it's mm -hmm. written up and uh, published and, and people know about it. 18 months sounds a bit too long to me. Yeah, well, if you look at the Especially IPCC the policy. report, yeah. it, you know, some of that is seven, eight years old. So we could be seven or eight years behind the time. So putting an immediate finger on the pulse, it, it's not only positive, it, it, you know, ordinary people can do this, which is really Absolutely. positive. They have to be adult um, because we can't take children, but because of the extreme environments, where we train them how to live, work and get gather this data in, in, in these extreme environments. Is there any way that the, the, the general public and the business community can engage in actually accessing the data and understanding yep. the data that you, that you catch? It's vital that this data is in the public domain. And so our scientific partners, which are, are in Plymouth actually, I mean Plymouth Marine Laboratory is instrumental in, uh, in, in helping us do this and they'll be on the vessel with their scientists as, as well as the Marine Biological Association all based in Plymouth the ocean city and this is ocean warrior we're dealing with mm -hmm. so so we're going to put a public face on what they're doing tremendous work that they're doing and we should be able to see change good and bad mm -hmm. but also it's about technology uh, mm -hmm. I'm an optimist uh, and the technology out there at the moment is sufficient to turn this round what we need to happen is the commercial guys, the movers and shakers, to see that they can actually earn money, sadly, <laughs> doing that. Yeah. And then the whole thing will turn around. And there is one shiny example um, in Australia, uh, the fourth largest iron ore uh, manufacturer, he has converted, or is in the process of converting, his entire operation. So all those huge trucks, yes, the locomotives, the ships, the massive ships that uh, dig up and, and ship iron ore, they're all being converted to hydrogen power, which is tremendous. I mean, you know, but he's going to earn a fortune out of it mm -hmm. because he's leading the way. And so if we can encourage commerce, and that's, you know, small businesses as well, to, to engage with this and be positive about it because the technology is there to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Steve? So refreshing to hear that. And I think, you know, when people say plastic's the problem, no, it isn't, we are. You know, we are that we are causing all of these problems, but actually the positive of that is, well, therefore we should be able to fix it. Mm. So I get, I, I, it's wonderful to hear that. And knowledge sharing is part of what we're doing as our message, albeit on a much, you know, it's a six to eight year old children we're talking to. 
I've been incredible. I've, owned, I've had the pleasure of doing three of these schools and every one of them genuinely I've sat down with children that are talking to me about sustainability and about nature and about worms and stuff and they're already getting it and they will they they are our future and it, we just want to support that in as many ways as we can we need the guys with the money we have our model already proven demonstrates a cs a return on your corporate social value of three and a half to four times your investment now to me it's not about that but if that means somebody out there that is interested in a corporate social value pound spending in the community instead of only giving you a du doubling your return it's three times four times because we're engaging with children, because it's about nature, then come and see us. Because if that's a real strong point for us and we get another 10 forest done on the back of using your money, then let's do it. Mm. Because we need to spread this. I cannot stress strongly enough, and I know this is a but a pin drop in the ocean, but these micro forests are- If it is a pin drop in the ocean, they'll pick up on it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's not much room for jokes in here. Ah, uh, right. Um, I had to get that one in, didn't But it's true. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, it is, yeah. Mm. Um, it, 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 it all counts. We're all working in the same environment to make that difference. So it, we need all of this. And, yeah. and I, I don't enjoy reading some of the stuff because mm. I get distressed and I want to do more. We want to do as much as we can at Society. There's 22,000 schools in England. Imagine if Project 96 could be the springboard to Absolutely. inspire yes. other people to get involved and do it nationally. There's, you're not going to run out of opportunity there. Um, and Jim Sam, what, what are your asks from the business community? Uh, really support. Uh, with, uh, yeah, knowledge about us. Uh, we don't, well, we do need money. Of course we need money and not investment. Not <laughs> but I don't there see it goes. coming from, um, you know, small businesses. What we need is people to know about us and engage with us and support us morally, really, because these are your normal people next door that are engaging in this. They are actually taking themselves, motivating themselves to do something about climate change, something real, something tangible, something we can deliver. And one of our aims is educative. Um, you know, we, what I've got in my heart is a massive, great big dashboard that says where we are, what we're picking up. It's got polar bears on, so a child can come and tap a polar bear and know everything childish about a polar bear, but then an adult can come up and tap it again and know everything scientific about what's happening with polar bears, you know, heavy metal poisoning and numbers, uh, you know, decreasing fertility and, and what have you. So, yeah, so there's a massive education education side of things and just to get across to small businesses um that they are vital in this process you know and you know something i don't think we've touched on but the children that are engaging and actually other examples who've talking to some headmistresses we shouldn't forget the well-being aspect of this yes so we are let's put this as it is we're ruining the environment that is that is actually naturally better for our own well-being Let's just think about that. Let's just think about that for a second and let's just think about the natural process of engaging with nature to make yourself feel better, to go and do better things. And let's stop this in every way that we can and let's get the, the likes of Jim and, 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 and Sam to you know, get this message out there, but give the hope. That's what, I, that's what we want to do. Hope we is that hope. absolutely crucial. Yeah. And you know, we're trying to, although we're incredibly remote, because that's where it happens. That's where we get the indicators. Um, we're trying to use technology to bring it into the classroom. So we're using virtual reality, augmented reality, to get them on the ship, looking at us, watching the polar bear coming towards us, and us commenting about it. They don't so, do very well with ships, so to say. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, therein lies a tale. We didn't think we did until we got oh, on it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you, I imagine you're both full of, oh, not full of it, but full of facts. <laughs> Pray so. Really. Come on, let, land us some, I bet you didn't know, kind of facts. Well, I bet you didn't know that 95% of the ocean is unexplored. No, I did not know that. Did you know that, Steve? Obviously. Obviously, obviously <laughs> anymore. Did you know that every second breath you take comes from the ocean? So it provides oxygen, 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. Wow, every breath I take, I'll be watching you. Yeah, and any, any more. I would see, I, oh, knew, I knew there'd be some amazing facts in there. Steve, um, do you want to just uh, close off by, by telling us about the exciting future that, that you're probably going to, I don't know, you've got a lot to do in the next few weeks just to get this, this thing really properly off the ground. 
fundamentally, this idea was born about helping corporate businesses on their carbon net zero journey. But as the idea has developed and we've recognised there's social value, there's educational value, there's fun, this is, this is about talking to businesses about how they expend their, their budget locally and have impact on, on, on various levels. And, you know, corporate social value, environmental social governance, CNZ, all of these things, there's so many things that we tick boxes on. So my ask, if that's what you're asking, yes, if it wasn't, then I will say anyway. You can ask away. My ask is to, you know, reach out to us. Um, go onto our website, www.society.uk, I think. If not, pop along to stand 6368. <laughs> Talk to us about how you're going to make an impact locally to some local children and hopefully the future of the planet. Your idea has literally grown organically, hasn't it? It has, yeah. 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 Um, so from Go Global Warrior then, um, how can we reach out to you and get involved? Well, next year we're going to bring the vessel to Plymouth. Right. So for Ocean Warrior, we'll have the vessel in the prime spot in, on the Barbican and people can come and visit us. They can uh, be entertained. May we come they and can... record an episode yes, of please the Devil? Yes, Brilliant. Please We'd do. love that. They can be educated. As long as they... it doesn't go anywhere. That's they fine. can volunteer to come along as well. Uh, you know, on the actual trips. We need 144 people, ordinary citizen scientists over the year, that split into eight legs of 18 people well, on each leg. And, um, you know, they will be helping the scientists side by side and will be reporting on their story yeah. um, in the broadest sense possible because Absolutely that fantastic. will engage other people. It will be Ocean Warrior Day in the Ocean City. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there you go. 18th of, of June. 18th of June. July. July. 18th July. of July. Yeah. Would, yeah. A, would a six-foot mushroom be welcome? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> on the poop deck. You're going to regret it. You're going to regret it. Where's the wizard drum kit when we needed it? I'll tell you now. How are you um, with heights? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I've got a feel. As long as you hold my hand, okay? I'll, I'm, I'm sure I'll be fine. You don't let go, that is, as well. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Steve, congratulations once again on the, on the launch of Society. I know it means an incredible, I mean, from the heart. I know the whole project is from the heart. And um, from somebody who was in the, the room um, last week at uh, Market Hall when you did that launch, you had a very good attendance and there was a lot of love in that room for everything you're you were doing. So congratulations Thank and very you. well it done. And also, um, Jim and Sam from Global Warrior, you're absolutely compelling. And I really, really, really would love to find out some more amazing facts. And actually, eventually, I'd love to be there on somehow even if it's just face i'll facetime you right that's what i'll do yep. i'll facetime you and you can take me with you all right so thank you very much for joining us as well it's our uh, pleasure thanks, Paul. let's close by just saying a few more hellos to some of our other exhibitors here today hello to capita midlife mot's leonardo hotels both plymouth and exeter emerson wills the plymouth charter are also here as well there's still time to pop down to plymouth pavilions if you're watching this live stream uh, live if not then don't forget to click subscribe on your podcast channel that you're following us via and thank you very much for listening in this is the devon and plymouth chamber of commerce here at the plymouth pavilions for the devon chamber of commerce business show 2023